I love these kind of nesting lamps. This area, I think we're officially in Kreuzberg now, Kreuzberg, which is definitely more trendy. I'm sure that the rents would go up explosively here. And again, just to give you a sense of the menus and the prices, you can get quite a lot for four to six euros. And immediately once you cross into this district, you start seeing organic in English or bio, which means the same thing, cognizant of, of ethical food, you could say. Something else that's quite interesting, I I'm not going to go into this store because I have I have a, um, a book bag at the moment, but what's interesting is 11% of the books in the world are published um, initially in the first language of German, which is really striking because I believe there are let me think for the moment, around no more than 120 million native speakers of German worldwide. So that's a huge proportion. You could say that they're 10 times rep um, overrepresented. And I believe that German, Germany, the German market is the third largest language after English and Mandarin. I, I'm not sure. I know that for, oh, here's another much larger bookstore. I don't know if it's used or, or new, but for newspapers, all of the top circulating countries are in Asia. I think Japan's number one, and Korea's number two, and India's number three. So the news and learning of it through print is quite considerable there. The German publishing market, I, if I didn't say it a moment before, is the third largest for books, and is fiercely, fiercely fought over. Something I did learn um, in terms of a shift is that um, after this market in English, everyone's really clamoring for Australia because they haven't made the shift to digital publications in terms of mm, critical mass. And so, the price of books there is extraordinary. And so, uh, particularly for children's publishing, everyone's trying to open uh, an, an Australian division. Looks like there's nothing more down this road. I will leave it there. Talk to you later, bye.